Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to look at making an interactive window that can have one of two things done to it. A, it can be broken. Two, it can be opened. So let's look at the break first because that's the more complicated and requires more explanation. Because part of what makes this work is what's been done already. What we have here are two images that were drawn in an external paint program. Paint programs have the ability to choose a level of transparency to color, and what happens is Unity honors that. So this looks like it's a solid white square. It's actually a transparent, very, very transparent white square. So in other words, you get just a little bit of discoloration as if there is like a thin pane of glass. The way this image works is you've got that thin layer of transparency on the outside, but the inside is completely uh, background color. So it's completely transparent with no color there at all. Um, so basically, you'll be able to see through it. So it creates this illusion of the outside being slightly cloudy and the inside being transparent. Now, it looks black only because it's a texture, but I'll show you how that works. So first, let's click on, let's create the pane of glass. So let's go to 3D object. We'll go to cube. We'll center this zero. Zero, zero, and now let's scale this out. Let's make this say three by three by 0.1. Nothing magical about it, just trying to get the uh, right perspective. Let's click on the main camera. That looks about right. I just kind of want it a little bit closer. Raise it up a little bit too. All right, that's better. So what we do is we click, we take this, and when you create, and uh, these are PNGs, when you create a 2D image externally and import it into the asset area of a Unity 3D project, so when you import it into a 3D project, it defaults to a texture. So in this case, for the moment, we're going to leave it as a texture. So we take that and we put it onto the object. And what you see is this materials folder is created, and here is the material that you just created. So what you're actually doing is you're not really applying a texture to an object so much as the material. The texture is a component of the material. Okay. So what we do is if we choose shader, so first let's run it as it is. Nothing special. It's a solid window. So if we choose, uh, again, we're on the, sh the material, and for the shader type, if we choose Sprite and Default, see what happens? Now you can really see what I was saying a few minutes ago, and that it's not, it, yes, it's a solid color, but it's highly transparent. So now you've got this little bit of discoloration. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we need to create a second material for when this breaks. So what we're going to do is, whereas this material we auto-created just by dragging and dropping, this one we're going to manually create. So create material, and we'll call this broke win mat. And for this one, what you do is you click on this little icon here, and it brings up the selectors. I kind of don't like using this icon because if you've got a lot of images, then you kind of have to uh, go messing around looking for them. But in this case, the project is small, so I know that's the one that I want. We close this, and then we do the same thing. We go to Standard, go to Sprite, and we go to Default. So again, you can see the cloudy outside, but the uh, clear inside. Again, that is accomplished through the paint program by making a slight, uh, by making an extremely transparent, or another way to say it is a slightly opaque color with no color here at all. This is just background. So what we need to do is when we click on this, we want this 
material to change. So we want to go from this material to this material. But before we do that, let's kind of give this a border so it looks more like a window. So game object, 3D object, cube, and we said it was 0, 0, and let's make this has to be yeah we'll do three so we'll make it exactly the same as the window and this is a terrible perspective so let's rotate the camera around there we go now we can see what we're doing look from above All right, so almost there. So we just need to slide this in and then up. Still not right. Having a hard time getting this right this evening. There. Now this is definitely too wide. So let's make this like 0.3. And it's also really too tall. So let's make this like point. Let's use the same size, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. All right, so is that finally correct then? Yes, it is. All right. So now that we have one for the top, we just duplicate that for the bottom. So copy, paste, slide that down to the bottom. And now we'll copy, paste, Rotate that 90 degrees on Z. Yep. Slide. Oops. Wrong direction. Slide that over. And then copy that and slide it to the other side. Let's see how that looks. I think that's good enough. Uh, looks like maybe this could be slid over just a little bit more. Yeah. Again, this isn't meant to be exact. This is really more about the functionality. Ultimately, you'll probably create these objects externally for your final project. All right, let's just see how that looks. Okay. Good enough for what we're trying to do. So, right click, create, C sharp, and we'll call this break window, although it'll also be used to open the window and other things. So, for this cube, let's rename this one window pane. Let's take our four cubes, drag and drop it onto the window pane. That way when we do movement later, it'll already be ready. Let's open up that script. Zoom in. And we're gonna do a couple things. First of all, we said we want to do the break first. So what you're going to do is you're actually switching from this material to this material. So public material, and we'll call this broken window mat. You don't have to, but when I create variables, I try to append to their name what they are. So when you start seeing these a list, you'll say, oh, it's a material, and it's for the broken window, and then you know what it does. So if we go to our window pane object, we haven't put the script on it yet, so go ahead and drag and drop that script onto it. And there is that new mat. So we'll go to our material folder and we'll put our broken mat onto it. Now the window is, for want of a better term, aware of that mat and can utilize it. 
So what we'll do is uh, say this is Friday the 13th and Jason is breaking windows. So void on mouse down. On mouse down is a predefined function, so it is case sensitive. You have to make sure O, M, and D are capitalized and the other letters are lowercase. If you make something capital that shouldn't be or vice versa, it will not work. It will think that this is something else entirely. So it is case sensitive. So on mouse down, we want the mat to change. So get component, renderer. Let's try that with a capital R. Renderer, material. And we want that material to be the broken window mat. And that's what I'm talking about. When you start getting a list, you really want to know right away what these do. So I say, okay, it's a material and it's the broken window material. That's the one I want. So we'll save that. Now, just a note, to make this work, for an object to be clickable, it needs a box collider. Well, by using the 3D models, they already come with a box collider. So actually, this should work. This is attached to the window pane. We click on the window pane, which is this. That checks for the clicking, and then it chains, changes the material. Just like that. And as you can see, where there's glass, it is still cloudy. But where there is no glass, it is now clear. So it's kind of a cheap effect because uh, in Friday the 13th, they actually use destructible objects. I'm trying to give you a simpler alternative, maybe for stylistic reasons. Maybe this is like a, um, a hidden object game, and so you don't need uh, all those particles and so forth to make it work. You just need that basic functionality, or maybe it's an adventure game a point-and-click adventure game. You break a window and then you can dive out. Okay, so that's how you break the window. But what if we don't want to break the window? What if we want to open the window? So to do that, we need a rigid body. So physics, rigid body, get rid of gravity. This allows for, as the category suggests, a application of physics, specifically velocity. So generally speaking, you don't need to both break a window and open a window. So for now, we'll just remark that out. And instead, what we'll do is we'll do get component. This time it's that rigid body component and it's velocity equals new vector three. We don't want it to move horizontally. We want it to move vertically. Let's say a rate of two and we don't want it to move Z. Now what's going to happen is when we click on it, it's going to move and it's going to keep moving. But I just wanted to show you how this works. So we added the rigid body, got rid of gravity, and we, we apply velocity when we click on the object. No longer breaks and now it opens. Okay. So, next. We want this to be timed. So we want it to open, but then we want it to automatically stop. So there's a bunch of ways you can do it, but you can, but you can apply a timer. So I enumerator. So outside of start, outside of update, outside of on mouse down, I enumerator. And just call it whatever you want, but it should be appropriate so that, again, it's self-documenting and you'll know what it is when you're going through this. So I enumerator. We'll call it stop window. So yield return new wait for seconds. And we'll have it go say 1.5 seconds. Now I usually try to explain every little thing. The main takeaway from this is just the last part, wait four seconds. What this means is that while the application continues to run, after this has been referenced, it'll wait one and a half seconds and then do whatever's next. Well, we haven't referenced it yet. We can't until we create it. So you kind of have to do the coding out of order. So what do we want to happen? Well, we just want to revert, well not reverse this, but we want to stop this. We don't want it to keep moving. 
And then, as I said, we need to reference it. So start coroutine, parenthesis, and stop window. There it is. So it wouldn't have been there if we tried to do this first. So we click on the object. Velocity is added. It goes to the coroutine that's called stop window. Stop window says, OK, wait one and a half seconds, and then do this, which happens to be the negating of that. All right. There we go. So your decision, if you think that was too long, that's probably really a game balance issue. Like in Friday 13th, they open the windows pretty quickly. Depends what you're trying to do. Maybe you want it to be more dramatic. Maybe they're opening the window really quietly. Again, if you're using a decibel, make sure the letter F is in there. If not, it will fail. So I just decreased how much time. So it doesn't open nearly as far because this was going all the way to the top. So it doesn't quite look like a window. Uh, a couple reasons, and that is it's not part of a frame. You don't have like a second window uh, in front of it, which we certainly could add one uh, to make it look more like um, So we could do this, and then we move it up. So now you do have two windows, but this one would have to be slightly in front of it. Oops. So this one would be in front of that window. And the other thing you'd want to do is when you copy an, an object, you copy everything. So what you could do is for this new object, you could remove the script because you don't want the top to open and you could get rid of the rigid body and as long as there's no collisions it shouldn't be it looks a little close so what we can do is we can just move this forward a tiny bit more there we go all right and when we click on it and that's it. Okay, so I think we are done with this one. So uh, you've seen two functionalities, how to emulate something being uh, a window being broken, as well as how to make the window being interactive uh, as far as opening it. So uh, that should about do it.